Hi, it's the girl out there right here with you. It's me, Cindy. And this week, I'm very excited to be here with Larry. Hi, Hi. Larry. <laughs> <laughs> I get nervous. Hi. I like how you were silent. <laughs> okay. Welcome to the podcast. And uh, I feel like right off the bat, we have to explain how we met our story because everyone always wants to know an update on you. So, which are you just that special? Wow. Um, <laughs> so, uh, you and I met close to actually over two years ago now, I guess, wouldn't it be? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which I will say that meeting has helped propel my business so much. So, um, because I think so many people that opened a door for people um, to to realize this, you know my abilities and what I could do and it just opened my business in a way that I I couldn't even imagine so um so that was when I was on your uh podcast that you were on so if you want to um and it was called uh Lady Bits right the Lady Bits mm -hmm. I've heard and um maybe if you want to share a little bit about that and uh uh you were going by the name Lindsay at that time and, um, and maybe you can just share a little bit about that and what's kind of happened for you since then. Okay. Um, yeah, so I was on a podcast called Lady Bits Uncovered, and I was on it with a couple of my old friends, and we were interviewing different spiritual people, and you came about, and we interviewed you. Um, and I would say that your interview was at a very pivotal moment for me. Um, I was trying to come out as non-binary transgender. I didn't know what that looked like or how to do it. Um, I believe a couple times on our podcast, I had mentioned that I was quote unquote genderqueer and I just didn't have, I just didn't have it in me at that point to come out like publicly. Um, but I was struggling emotionally because I knew my truth and I had known it for a very long time and I just didn't know that it was safe or okay to say those, you know, say those words out loud. Um, I cried the entire time that we interviewed you. You did a reading for me and it was, you know, spot on about being in a cage and having to break free from the cage and fly like the bird, like the bird that I am. Um, and it, it's interesting because my spirit animal is actually um, a vulture. That is the animal that I, that I hold close to my heart. And when you started talking about birds, I was like, oh, fuck, she knows about the vulture. Like, how does she know this? And then the more you talked, the more I was like, oh, God, she can see it. She knows she's going to out me. And, you know, I had these these fears and you in this really weird way comforted me that day and and really showed me that I wasn't living, you know, my truth and that I needed to be. Um, and I will forever be grateful for you for that. I don't think you even realized that you did that. Um, and then since the podcast, uh, I'll just kind of give you like a general and then you can ask questions if that's yeah. easier. Yeah. Um, since that podcast, I left the job that I was at where I was actually discriminated and harassed against because of coming out as transgender. I am no longer friends with the people that I was friends with. Um, that was their choice, but it, you know, in the long run, I see it now as, as a blessing, um, I came out as non-binary publicly on social media um, and that, you know, to my family and my friends and my loved ones, um, not necessarily in that order, but that's, that's just how I <laughs> know to say it. Um, I went through what I would like to call a nervous breakdown in the process of coming out. I didn't know who I was. I had a complete identity crisis and imposter syndrome. I felt like I had spent, you know, 10 years more or less trying to help other people and in the jobs that I was in in the you know relationships that I was in in the communities that I was part of and the second that I stopped doing all of that and just looked at myself it was so painful to see what was inside that I crumbled and I started rebuilding really slowly I started seeing a psychiatrist and a therapist um 
through the Transgender Institute online. We did like, you know, telehealth and I got stable on medication. <laughs> I have uh, CPTSD is what he said, but I have like under the umbrella of trauma, I have um, a mood disorder and it comes from, you know, years and years of physical and sexual trauma. And all of that trauma also led to me living like a secret life that I didn't, you know, know how to live out loud because I, I just didn't feel safe. Um, and through getting stable on medication, through, um, you know, starting to make friends that are in the queer community, my life has become a lot better, a lot brighter. Um, I am no longer suicidal. I am living, I would say very happily as, you know, an out transgender person. And I know the privilege of that and I don't take that for granted. And I'm just really grateful to be here, to be honest. Ask all the questions. <laughs> Thank you for being so open. Um, I am I am really excited for this opportunity, and I know how hard this must have been for you to have gone through the last two years that you have gone through to the acceptance of where you are now. Um, I had asked you. I'd asked you about six months ago. Are you ready to be on the podcast with me? And you had said nope. <laughs> not yet <laughs> which I think is uh, really owning who you are and where you're at and um, you know you and I have talked a few times we talked definitely at the beginning right we had done a few sessions together and I could see how you were you were really unraveling yourself um, and um, that is that is true growth and you were you were in the mud with yourself um, so that which I say you were in the mud and um, as I'm now you know I was just saying to you before we started this recording um, I've now sort of taken even more time in the last week to really kind of begin to look at all of these pieces and it is it is I, I stumbled because I can't even <laughs> comprehend what you are trying to understand for yourself. Um, and so I, I just, I give you a, a huge, like a huge hurrah for where you're at. And now I want to sit here and ask all these questions because um, even what I have here in front of me are th like it says, um, which you might laugh at, but it's like uh, what straight people want to ask, but they're too scared to ask. <laughs> And I, I, I do think for a lot of us, it on this part of it, there we we are curious. We are we do want to know these things. Um, and part of it is because we we don't feel these these ways. Um, so when I start to look at it, I had never even thought of that, or I I didn't even didn't even know like um, what does non binary me okay thank you um, <laughs> so okay a couple things though so straight is your sexual orientation and yes. gender are very different so okay great yes so Let's we'll get into that. that we can totally yes. get into that um yes. can we start with that yeah if you'd like okay. to i was going to go into what non-binary is but it doesn't matter okay well let's start so, with it okay <laughs> i'll just we'll start here everything <laughs> is on a spectrum Yes. And I can only, okay, I am by no means the transgender voice. I can only share my experience and, and what it means to me. Um, and I hope that it can, you know, start the conversation is really all I care about at this point. Um, yes. Is starting the conversation like you have with people and being able to ask questions and as a transgender person, being able to have grace with not only myself, but with someone else who is asking questions and does genuinely want to know because it, it's hard at times where you feel judged um, and you're not sure if a person is asking because they care or because they're just asking just to kind of know information, which does happen. Um, but everything is on a spectrum. So if there's like the societal binary system, meaning on that spectrum, society says that one end is a boy and at one end is a girl, then 
that's gender. Sexuality is also on that, on that spectrum, on a different one. So if somebody's like, you know, society creates on one side straight and on the other side gay, and then there's all the like, you know, what I like to call queer in the middle. <laughs> um, and that's where I fall is, is in that middle. I consider myself pansexual. There's a lot of terms, but I'll just kind of go through my own experience. Pansexual for me means that I am attracted to the person and the soul and not necessarily their gender or how they present because gender identity and your expression of how you dress are also, you know, on a spectrum too. And so people, people that are close to me laugh and they say, you know, that I give them the gift of androgyny. So it's easier for them to remember I'm not a girl. So we'll go into non-binary now. Okay. Non-binary on that spectrum says, you know, males on one side, females on the other side. Non-binary falls somewhere in the middle. Um, for other people, for me, I, I would say that I lean more towards the masculine side. There is a term called transmasculine, which means that I am transgender, non-binary, but I do identify more on the masculine side. Meaning if somebody confuses me with a boy, I, I don't care. Like I prefer they, them, but if someone refers to me as a, as a he or a him, I, I don't think about it. And I'm just like, oh, whatever, that's fine. If someone refers to me as a girl or she, her, hers, I cringe. Like I have a visceral reaction because I know that I'm not supposed to be a girl. I know that I was born with anatomy and that there's an argument against science that some people, mostly religious people feel. Um, but I don't believe that your sexual organs make up who you are as a person. Okay. I know it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see how I'm like, okay. I saw you writing stuff down. I was like, I was yeah, like, that's good. That's good. Take notes. Trying to take all of it in. <laughs> and so I do, I actually like the idea of um, like all of it being on a line, right? Like even like, and I've heard so many conversations and even as I grow older, right? Like the idea of straight versus like heterosexual, like that everything's on a spectrum. And I think as you grow and expand, you kind of go like, okay. And you and I had discussed earlier, even the pansexual, because I was, I was telling you how my children seem much more open-minded to everything. Uh, and maybe it's where I live versus other areas of the world. Because here I'll sit here and talk to them. And my oldest son will just be like, oh, it's pansexual. And I'm like, what is pansexual? And, <laughs> and, and then when you explained it, I feel like that is like the core of where every one of us like ought to be. I, I love mean, that, that you said it and that I didn't have to say it, <laughs> that I, I wish people could be more fluid in their, in their understanding and also in their own experience. But, you know, they're, we live in a world where people like to classify things and they right. like to have things in little boxes so that it makes sense to them. Right. And they want to understand it, especially the older generation, right? Um, because they have a, a really big problem. And I'll say they, meaning my family, has a really big problem with they, them pronouns because it refers to two people according to their English background. <laughs> right. And I'm like, well, if you didn't know that someone left their umbrella in a restaurant and you would go up, you would say someone left their umbrella. You would never say, oh, well, he left his umbrella because you don't know if it was a man that left the umbrella. And that simple, that simple example is what my best friend told me because she told that to her three-year-old. And I was mind blown because it's the easiest explanation for somebody to be like, oh, if you're not comfortable with they, them, you use it all the time. You just don't know. That's very clear. <laughs> I love that example because it's, Thank it you just, very much. It kind of it kind of shuts up the idea <laughs> of like, oh, but it's, you know, and then I also in that giving myself grace and giving people grace, I try to tell my family if it's hard for you, then you can think of me as two people. I go by Larry, that is my chosen name, my preferred right. name. Um I was born as Lindsay. And so yes. I try to tell people like if you have a problem with that, with with whatever, then just imagine that I'm two people and I'm Larry and Lindsay, and then you can refer to us as they. Right. Okay. So that now, yeah. <laughs> Voila. So, so when you're saying for yourself that you, um, 
are Larry and Lindsay inside, but yet you have a visceral reaction to Lindsay. Why is it that you would still want to refer to Lindsay within you if you have this visceral reaction to Lindsay being within you? I'm going to answer and try not to cry. Oh, I'm sorry. Because, no, it's okay. Because that is me cutting myself off for someone else still. That is me trying to make my family comfortable, or anyone for that matter, more comfortable to my own detriment that I am willing. And this is something that a lot of transgender people do because we're like, oh, well, they don't get it. So, you know, let me make it easier for them. And now that I'm saying it out loud, I'm like, why the fuck would I make something that is so personal easier for someone else to grasp? Um, so I'm again, thankful for you because you just reminded me that I don't have to do that. Like I don't have to make my identity more comfortable for other people. Yeah. That's on them. Yeah. Breakthroughs. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> right here on the podcast. <laughs> Ta da. Well, I think it's, yeah, like I think for, for me, when I hear you um, shine really brightly when you're talking about Larry and that Larry is the, the voice that you feel inside and that that's who you feel committed to and that you're, you're most proud of, then I would say that that to me makes sense. Um, I, um, and that we can talk a little bit about like you entering into a washroom and the way you're doing that. Um, I just would love, I want to make sense of for when people, and maybe it's that you're still feeling attached to both sides still. So that's where you say they, them. But at one point, do you think you will transition to him, he? So, ah. okay. So you, the, I like was really excited to unmute. I, um, no. I am no, not, okay. I am not F to M. I am not female What's, to male. Oh, okay. So a F trans man. Okay. Um, I like non-binary because I don't fit into either of those categories. But if I, like, if I had, if I had a gun to my head and I had to choose, like in this world that we live in where they're like, pick a side, you know, I, I would not choose to be a female. Um, so I recently, we'll just, we'll go into this. I recently yes. started using the men's restroom in public. Yes. Yes. Um, and it's because I don't feel like I should have to go into the women's restroom because I have, I don't know if I can say that word, a female yes. part, <laughs> vagina, uh, <laughs> that I don't know that that determines which bathroom I can use. Um, right. And I've been, you know, I follow a lot of trans men on Instagram. I follow a lot of transgender people actually yeah. on Instagram. And a couple have, you know, been, been saying something very specific and it's to stop apologizing for being who you are and to take up space. And so I stopped apologizing for wanting to use the men's bathroom and just do it. And nobody has said anything to me. Yeah. Um, I do live in the South. I assume at some point somebody will probably say something to me, um, in which case I'm you know, it's a free country and I'm 37 years old. And if I want to use the men's restroom, I'm going to use the men's restroom. And ladies, if you need to use the restroom and the, the women's is full, you also, in my opinion, should be allowed to use the men's restroom. And I know that society is like, you know, says no to that, but I, I don't mean to be a like, fuck the system person. I mean, I always have been, but I don't, <laughs> It's, it's not my intention to be like, well, down with the patriarchy. I, I just really don't understand why we live in a world where people are so interested and offended by what other people do just because it's different from them. Right. And I think, I think to be honest, when you were, um, when you were holding, uh, I'm trying to think of the words, and I know that you will, you will, you will hold my hand in this moment as I say this, because I'm saying it with grace. <laughs> when I when I met you as Lindsay only, and so when you had um, the longer nails, or when you, when I right in that area and were wearing makeup, you had a harder tone to you, almost as if you do you know what I mean? You it felt more like you were like screw the system, da 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 da. Whereas now it's like you've 
removed all of that. Um, and people can scroll back, back to some of those photos of you then compared to now where you, it's like, I see you now, like this is you more now, like you're an acceptance of, no, I just, I just want to go in the washroom. <laughs> Like I lived in hiding for so long and I had long, I mean, long nails and long eyelashes and long black hair and wore dresses and did all the things and tried really hard. Like I, man, I tried so hard to be a girl. I tried so hard to fit into that box for, to be honest, my family. Um, And I just looked around at a certain point and was like, these people are not living their best life. These people are not happier than they've ever been. And therefore I cannot subject my own happiness based on like their validation or, or their opinion. And I know my family loves me. That's, that's not a question. I'm not sure they like me and that's okay. Um, It's taken me a very long time to like me. And I'm still, I mean, I'm still on the journey, right? Every day I learned something new about myself. Every day I learned something like, okay, perfect example. I went to the pharmacy. This is like a day in the life of a trans person. I went to the pharmacy and they said, you know, Hey, sir, how can we help you? And I was like, so excited that somebody didn't say ma'am because they're like, everything is ma'am in the South. And I started crying because I got so excited. Um, and then, you know, later that afternoon, I go to get an oil change for my car and I get $5 off for ladies day. And I'm sitting in the car, like, well, do I take the discount? Like, is this rude? (laughs) Should I be offended? But I also want, like, I I didn't know how to feel in that exact moment. And I took the moment and I told the guy, I said, Hey, I really appreciate this discount. I just want to let you know, I don't identify as a woman. If you need to take the five bucks back, like I totally get it. And he like looked at me, like I had just popped a balloon (laughs) in his face. Like he was just like, uh, it's okay. And I was like, okay, cool, man. Thank you. Like, just so, you know, I don't want it to be awkward ever. Um, but that's like a day, like I had a really good up and then I had a really confusing moment and kind of a down. And then, you know, I come home at the end of the day and I, I love my partner and my dog and we talk about these things and we communicate. And from, from the outside world, I am in what looks like a heteronormative relationship because I'm with a cisgendered man. Cisgendered meaning identifies as the gender that you were assigned at birth. So you're cisgendered. Cisgender. Cisgendered. (laughs) Versus transgender. And trans means transient and that you're somewhere in where you feel you fit. Wow. That's what I learned, at least. I could be wrong. (laughs) No, that is great. Okay. So one, I can't believe there's $5 off for women once. Like I'd react to that. Like what? In the South. (laughs) I live in the South, man. It's, it's a trippy place. So we're not going to focus on, (laughs) but anyway, (laughs) Um, $5 off your oil change. Anyway. Um, so (laughs) moving along, um, but yes, so you are married or you're in a relationship with your a partner who you have been with for six years? Yes. Yes. Um, and so and so he's heterosexual or do you classify like how do you do you, So we don't we don't classify. I mean classify. technically from the outside world, we just look like we're in, you know. A quote unquote normal relationship. I would say nothing about our relationship is normal because I am <laughs> the least normal person that's ever existed. You know what? Apparently, I'm going to say a, a hands up here. I would say that the majority of relationships are normal. I like that. Um, well, they're and, so unique, right? Like they're so yes. unique to that person or persons. Yes. Um, and nobody can kind of you know, judge from the outside unless they choose to do so. But I always, like, I've always said out loud that we're very open. We're very open in our communication as well. Um, And most of that is because of me. And because I'm like this bird that just like floats sometimes (laughs) when it comes to sexuality and preferences. Like I'll be like, oh, I like this. And then maybe next week I like this. Yes. And I think that's part of being pansexual is 
I don't limit myself to like, oh, I only like this, this way, this time with this person. Yes. I think the truest, um, more like trust in relationships, which is a real change in what we, and it, and obviously some people won't agree with it. That's okay. But it's when um, people can come together and it doesn't even have to be two people, but that again, some people won't understand that. That's all right. Um, <laughs> it's just when, when people can come together and understand that there's trust and everyone feels safe together. And so as long as people feel safe in what is happening, then it's not, others don't have to worry. If the, the people feel safe together and they are all right and there is communication, um, then everything's working. If, if the people don't feel safe, then I don't think it's okay. But as long as everyone's okay, then it's fine. Um, you, said, you said that word, right? Safe. People ask me all the time because I love women people are like, well, why are you with a cisgendered man? You know, I've gotten that you asked me in the beginning what straight people like to ask. And that is probably number one. It's like, well, if you're queer and you like women, why are you with a man? In which place, like, in which case I say, like, this is my best friend and my lover. And we met six years ago. We met when we were both part of a 12-step community. Um, We, like, left that community together, so to speak. We have grown stronger over the years because of our experiences together and separate. Um, And he is the only man that I have ever felt safe with. He is the only cisgendered man. And I'm probably going to offend. I mean, I doubt they would listen to this, but, you know, ex-boyfriends. Like, it's true. He's the only man that I've ever felt safe with, including my own family. Like, I there's no words for it. I mean, I, like, I could keep talking about it, but I feel like there's no words. (laughs) Yeah. So you are, you're so connected, right? Yet you are attracted to women. Mm -hmm. And that can be any woman. It could be a trans woman. It could be a cisgendered woman. But I guess that makes you pansexual. Yeah. Yeah. It's complicated. (laughs) Sexuality (laughs) is so complicated. Like with gender, I'm like, no, I'm in the middle. And people are like, that's complicated. What do you mean you're in the middle? And I'm like, no, I know this. But with sexuality, I'm like, I like everything, I guess. I don't know. And I'm (laughs) figuring it out what I don't like along the way. (laughs) I I know. I think it's, yeah, I, I really, I, I'm just so, I'm interested with all of it. So this is one of those things where talking to um talking to people that are probably lean more towards if you're looking at the the like the heterosexual side where they're saying what makes them most uncomfortable when now as things are becoming much more open is they're nervous about offending somebody with the they then terms or or, um you know they're more scared they're like i'm gonna say it wrong or what right so i i think that's when you and i spoke earlier you were saying as long as you know that somebody is um making the effort um right so that you know they're trying you just want to know that people are consciously trying i mean that's it i want to i wish every person was an ally meaning like you know ally um but i know that that's not realistic so i what I hope in the world is that when somebody encounters a transgender person and they're super uncomfortable to just kind of remember that the transgender person is also probably uncomfortable with the conversation. (laughs) And that as long as you are trying to not offend the person, then that's all that matters. You know, if, if someone corrects you, the worst experience, to be honest, is correcting someone and then having them backpedal and be like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And it's like, shh, you're making it weird. <laughs> Just say it once. Let's move forward. I've moved on. You can totally move on. Like I have, <laughs> we are moving on in this conversation, <laughs> but I know that for some people it's, they hate themselves almost when they make that mistake. And I hate that for them. Like I genuinely hate that for them because I'm like, I'm not judging you. Right. It's okay. Unless you're outwardly rude about it. In which case, yes, I, I am judging when people do that. (laughs) So just to acknowledge it and know that you're just going to keep on moving forward. Yeah. Cause it, it all comes from a place of love is what I want to believe. And so if it's someone asking a question, like I know that that comes from, a place of love and wanting to understand 
even if it's a lot and it's hard to like comprehend the fact that you even want to have this conversation and that you want to ask questions and be open to the answers, that's everything. It's true. So then there was this new book about, and I'm Neo, what? Neo pronouns. Neo pronouns. <laughs> So do you know, now I know you said you're still learning all of this. So what are the neo pronouns? Like, so Z I'm still learning, but I know okay. that there's, there's Z, um, Z, Z and X. And I know that I'm not sure how you use them or how you, like, I'm still learning and, and trying to educate myself on it. And that's what I meant by like, I don't know. I only know my own experience. I don't know everything, but I am yeah. like the most open to learning about everything because I want it's not even that I want to understand everybody. It's that I want people to feel safe with me. I want them to know that I am a safe place if they want to say something and, you know, knowledge is power and to, to have that knowledge, to be able to be there for people is, is a beautiful thing. Okay. And there's neo pronouns are for people who don't identify in any of what I just talked about. Yes. Okay. So that's totally different. It's like a whole other, yeah, it's a whole other category and it's, it's beautiful. I mean, I, I hope to meet people that, that go by, you know, neo pronouns so that I can really learn even more. Um, I'm trying to surround, I keep hitting this mixer that's next to me. I'm in my kitchen. <laughs> Sorry about that. I like that, that you have a mixer. I don't have a mixer. <laughs> I love to bake. I, there's two things I do in my spare time that I really discovered when I was in that depression. And I was like trying to find, my therapist was like, try to find things that make you happy. And I was like, nothing makes me happy. Like, <laughs> and she was like, no, like, like really, like, what do you like to do? And I was like, okay, I love to eat. I love to eat, period. Um, but I love to eat sweets. Like I have a huge sweet tooth. And so I bake all the time. And that, like, I was baking cookies every day, like the beginning of COVID. <laughs> I've kind of toned down the cookies. Um <laughs> But I also make candles. It's it's a side business oh. that I have. And I started doing it when I was, you know, really depressed. And it's turned into this, like, thriving business, which is so interesting. And so if anyone's listening to this and you are not sure what to do in your life or what direction, like, find a hobby or something that makes you happy. Because if you end up making money off of it, that's a bonus. But at least you do it for you. And that's huge. Like, I love candles. And now I have candles burning throughout my house because I make them. I don't have to buy them anymore. <laughs> I love that. And that I think is so true, right? When you actually start investing in something you love and you're not actually worried about it being like, a, you're not worried about what it's going to make money. It actually can because it can support you. So um, one of the other things uh, I've, I have been curious, like you've known, obviously, since you were very young, right? That this was, you'd said that Sorry, I just skipped over that, but that you had done an inner child um, meditation or some some sort of inner child work, and that's where you discovered Larry. Yeah. So, so how I've did known? Oh yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, go go. Um, I've known my whole life that I wasn't a girl. I mean, even as a kid, like I tried. I have all these memories of you know my parents did the best they could. I don't want this to sound like I'm bagging on them, but I wanted you know Ninja Turtles, and they were like this why do you want Ninja Turtles? Like your brother can have Ninja Turtles and I wanted to be Batman. And it was like the same type of thing. And, you know, my grandma was like, let her be Batman. If, you know, at the time I was she, if she wants to be Batman, <laughs> like my grandparents didn't seem to be bothered by it. But I think when you're raising a kid and you have these expectations, all my friends have children, they have expectations of what they, you know, hope for their child. And I understand that when that changes, it can be can be really hard you know but I have known forever and when I finally told Jake we had I mean probably from the beginning of our relationship we had talked about my what I called gender stuff and that's like what I used to refer to it as because I just didn't know how to classify like the ambiguity of like what was happening and um you know how to be myself um Okay, repeat the question because now I'm like all off on emotions. Well, uh, no, so obviously, <laughs> so you're saying that you just knew there was something and then you'd done an inner child um, meditation. Yes. So, yeah. So, and then in the middle of kind of 
COVID and my nervous breakdown, I did this inner child workshop that I actually created, co-created with somebody who I also have no longer in my life. Um, but through this inner child workshop, I, I discovered that the name that I feel more comfortable with is Larry and all of my friends started calling me Larry and it just, it stuck and it felt, there's a word in the trans community called euphoric and it felt euphoric to me. I felt like, oh, this feels really good. Like when someone says Larry, I genuinely feel this like inner warmth and peace within me. And when someone says Lindsay, I'm like, how, how do you know her? <laughs> like, how did you know her? Is like my first reaction. <laughs> right. <laughs> because I feel like so much of my life, not so much, my entire life up until coming out was just lies and cover-ups and wearing masks and I think about all the lifetimes that I've had and all of the different like really lives that I've lived and this is the best one yet it's super confusing and it's sometimes really exhausting <laughs> but this is the most real the most me you know like I get to live my life and be me and whatever that means like I just figure it out day by day to be honest yeah, I think I think that's it where sometimes people think that when they actually are being truly honest with themselves that it's just going to be simple and easy. Um, it's not. <laughs> oh, yeah, I thought I'm going to be honest. I thought I'm going to come out and everything's going to get easier suddenly because I'm living my truth and I'm like, ta-da, like yeah. everything in my life is going to just get easier. And it was so fucking the opposite. It was like the second I had said the words, then I dealt with the reactions of people. And then I dealt with expectations that I had for myself and others. Then I dealt with, you know, dynamics changing between people that were in my life that I don't know if they couldn't or just wouldn't be part of this, you know, be part of Larry and that's okay. But it, it was like every day was something new and it sort of still is that way, but it's more positive now where and I really say like stable on medication. I'm a huge proponent for mental health and medication. Um, if you're listening and you are being shamed about your medication, think about not being friends with that person anymore. Um, when I talk about the people that were in my life that aren't in my life anymore, it was people that felt um, a certain way about me talking about my mental health and about, there's that mixer. There it again. is. You just need talking, to be baking. <laughs> talking about, um, you know, they, they couldn't deal and that's okay. Like, it's okay that some people, it's just too much for them, or it goes against what they believe. Or what I've really found to be interesting is that my existence can make somebody question their own and question their own reality and like their sexual preferences. And, and I only know that because multiple people have said that to me where it was like, yeah. oh, you coming out, like really changed things for me. Cause it made me look at my relationship and made me look at how I feel. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. Like that's why I share so that, you know, we can start conversations and people can kind of take a look in the mirror and see how they feel because I couldn't even look in the mirror until very recently. I think I, I think everything you're saying there around where it comes to, I think medication is very important. <laughs> and um, I say that for myself, I'm on medication every day for seizures. And sometimes I think when somebody's like, oh, they shouldn't be on that medication. I think it's exactly the same. Like if something can keep us stable, whether it's for our mental health, whether it's for seizures, I would, why would we not do that? Um, and that allows you to function and hear. And um, I remember a friend even just had said, you know, I didn't want to go on this medication for anxiety. Why? Why? <laughs> She's like, suddenly now, I feel okay. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, isn't that amazing? Like, you're, you're okay. <laughs> um, and so we try so hard to do everything all alone and we don't need to. And I think whenever I've had major shifts in my life, whatever it's going to be, and then I'm fully speaking my truth, um, then there will be people who will like back away or they'll, Point. And I think it's just because that they're look, it's uncomfortable for them to have to look at things in their own life. And that's okay. That's okay. I mean, that's, and that's how it was for me for a very long yeah. time. You know, I've, I've been for the better part of my life in and out of the queer community because of my own insecurities, we'll say. Um, 
And I never, like, I still go through this where I feel like I'm not trans enough to be considered transgender, you know, but surrounding yourself with people who want to see you succeed is, is everything, you know, and it, it's hard. I think it's hard for people when they've been friends with somebody and their identity is, you know, quote unquote changed when really it's just them coming into their true self. I think that's got to be hard for people. And I'm, I'm starting now two years later um, and on those medications, I'm starting to be able to look at that, you know, and go, Oh, like maybe this person isn't the worst person ever. Maybe they just, you know, had to question their own reality and that was too much for them or, or it just made them uncomfortable. And I'm trying I don't want to say I'm there. I'm trying to be okay with the fact that my existence might make someone uncomfortable and that that has nothing to do with me. That part is hard for me (laughs) because at the end of the day, I want everyone to like me, right? Like that's the human condition is we just want to be loved and in a perfect world, everybody would love everybody. And I I agree, and I think getting to that place of going, we just we're gonna make people uncomfortable, and maybe at the back of it they'll be thinking about new ideas. And in the end, the more you love yourself, the the healthier you will be, and it's okay. Yeah. So if you could give um one one piece of uh, not even advice, just throwing it out there for um for for those who are um, thinking of, is it is the term even still coming out? Like, what is that what it is now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. What would that be? <laughs> oh, man, there's so much. Um, it doesn't have to make sense to anybody else. I mean, just exactly what I was just talking about. It doesn't have to make sense to anyone else. You just need to make sense of it for you. And I'm going to, you know, duplicate what my friend said and take up fucking space and don't apologize for taking up that space, whatever that space looks like for you. And that space will grow and shrink over time. So, you know, sometimes you're going to take. And if you need someone to talk to, reach out. I'm here. I really liked what you said when we were talking um, previously about the the thought of not to worry if one day you feel like Larry and the next day you feel again like Lindsay, Um, like that, you know, that it, I don't know if you want to explain that too. Yeah, that in the process of coming out, there's, I don't think it's one day, it's, it's a whole life of coming out and figuring out who you are and if one day you feel like you are on the you know, that spectrum to the far right side. And then the next morning you wake up and you're like, nah, fuck, I'm over here now. I don't know what to do. Just know that that's okay. Like, that's what I meant. Like, it doesn't have to make sense to anybody else that if one day you feel this way and one day you feel that way, there are, there is just so many opportunities for you to be happy. And, and that is what matters. And where can people find you? You can find me on Instagram at Larry Roth 1.0, L-A-R-R-Y-R-O-S-S 1.0, the one and only. And you can go and get $5 off of oil change. And yeah, you can apparently, yeah. And, and the ladies day thing, I mean, that was, that was just a mind fuck for me because growing up in California, that's not a thing. Like they don't, they don't do that. So it's. Moving to the South uh, almost three years ago has been, has been very interesting. Coming out in the South has been very, very interesting. I'll keep you posted. (laughs) Keep you up to date. Thank you. Thank you. You know what? Thank you so much for, and I should explain, like when I did that podcast, I only had your first name. And that was it. I'd never seen any info about you. And um, so exciting to see how uncaged you come. So, yeah, you are flying. I am so excited for, and when you smile, it's like the whole, 
I love when you smile like that. Just, yeah, I love it. Thank you for um, having me. Thank you, as always. And I cannot wait to see what comes next. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.